Hi, grace and peace be yours through Christ our Lord. I'm Pastor Ralph Hill from Mount Horb Lutheran Church. Today, uh, we're going to dwell in the Word. It's May 29th, a Saturday, and we're going to look at Psalm 29. Hope you're having a blessed day today. So here's the psalmist. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders the Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. And in his temple, all say glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. So as you dwell on this today, what jumps out at you? What questions might it raise for you in your faith journey? And then what nudge do you think God is giving you in your, as God's spirit lives in you and dwells in you and says, hey, listen to that. This is what you need to think about today. Um, we're getting ready to have a, a work day at church. And so I'm wearing one of our Lutheran, I mean, our, um, Lutheran shirts that we have for Mount Horeb. And on the front, it just has our logo with worship, learn, witness, serve, support. And then on the back, It has the ELCA logo, God's work, our hands, and has some hands there. So I really do appreciate our witness team when they put this one together a few years ago. But it's a reminder that we live in response to God. Um, but I hope you have a good day. It looks like it's going to be a little bit cloudy but warm, and then tomorrow we'll have a cool front coming in. So when I dwell on this verse today as I'm getting ready to go out, um, the passage that jumped out at me is, The voice of the Lord is over the waters, the glory of the God of glory thunders, and this is in verse 3. Um, and just that because it reminded me of how God's voice was there at the beginning over the waters um, in the void and how God created. And it's this same voice throughout the Bible. And so we hear throughout the psalm the voice of the Lord, the voice of the Lord, and it gives all these attributes to remind us how powerful it is, how delicate it is, how pervasive it is, and how life-creating it is. Um, and so this is the voice that we listen for and to in our daily lives, in our walk in life. It reminded me of the television show called The Voice. Um, and in this show, there are four judges who sit uh, in rotating chairs with their backs to a contestant. So the contestant comes in, the judges are facing the opposite direction, and the contestant sings a song. And if any one of the judges determines that there's something in that contestant's voice alone, which qualifies them to continue. You know, they're not able to look at them or see what they, what kind of presence they have. Then the judge can push a button and turn their chair around to acknowledge it, and then they get a vote so they can continue in the contest. Um, and the strength of the show seems to be in the strength of the voice of the person, not on any other attribute of the contestant. And so the verse today that I heard, the voice of the Lord is over the waters, the God of glory thunders, and how important voices are. Over the years, as my own um, faith has grown and been challenged, I find that listening for God has always been vital to the deepening of my faith. And I would say early in my faith journey, I was more of a literal type listener, and I'd listen for almost uh, a physical voice. I was just saying, okay, God, speak to me. I want to hear you. I want to see writing on the wall. I want to see this thing fall when I... Um, and I realize that that's kind of putting God to the test and also that God speaks in more than just a voice way. Um, and perhaps like Elijah in the cave, uh, in that story in uh, 1 Kings chapter 19, it's a great story, I listened for a voice that sounded like thunder or an earthquake or fire. Um, and I was usually disappointed in the response. However, I did find that when I was quite, and I'll probably look back and saying God probably did speak to me. I just wasn't able to hear it the way God spoke because of my own uh, place in my life. Um, but I did find that when I was quiet, 
that my listening was more productive. And when I was less focused on me, that my listening was more productive. When I emptied myself of my own thoughts, I would be surprised how I might begin to see God in my life. And after being called to Mount Horeb, um, I began to reconsider this story of Elijah. Um, Mount Horeb, you know, received its name from that story 130 years ago when we were founded. And it's in that 1 Kings chapter 19 verse. But Elijah, we hear in that story, and I'll just recap it real quick, was fleeing from Jezebel, who was the wife of Ahab, who was the king of Israel at the time. And because she was from a different um, country and, and worshipped Baal and other gods, um, she got her husband to allow for the worship of Baal. And Elisha, Elisha then prophesies against the king and particularly against her. She becomes enraged uh, that Elijah had ordered um, the deaths of her priests and threatens to kill Elijah. And so Elijah flees into the wilderness and finally sits down under a shrub and prays for death and said, listen, man, this God, this is, this is no life for me. All this trouble that seems to be caused by being a faithful person. So he falls asleep under the tree. And when he awakens, this angel somehow delivers a miraculous jar of water delivered um, and allows him. Also, there's this food uh, that he can eat and drink. Um, and he's able to travel for 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Horeb, the same place that Moses uh, received the Ten Commandments. And Mount Horeb literally means mountain of God because it's where God's presence was experienced. Burning bush, Ten Commandments, here with Elijah. And so that's how we received our name at Mount Horeb. It's the presence of God. And that's our tagline, we experiencing and sharing God's presence. And so this verse again from today, the voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. You know, unlike Moses in the story, Elijah, who tried to defend Israel when they sinned against the gold, or who tried to defend Israel against the golden calf thing, Elijah complains to God over the Israelites' unfaithfulness and says that he's the only one left. And up until this time, Elijah is the only, uh, has only the word of God to guide him. But now, He's told to go outside this cave and to stand before the Lord. A terrible wind passes, but God is not in the wind. A great earthquake shakes the mountain, but God is not in the earthquake. And then a fire passes by the mountain, and God's not in the fire. And then a still small voice comes to Elijah. And then Elijah hears God's voice and God's instruction. So even though God is, is um, heard in this still small voice, it is life-affirming life-changing, even thunderous, um, because it makes that kind of a difference. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. So when we hear God's voice, it can be very almost imperceptible, but the power of it is still immense. And so what I've appreciated about faith practices in my life, you know, which are worship, reading of scripture, prayer, spiritual friendships, service, and giving financially to whatever, but also to uh, giving of time and talent. It's as I do those things consistently and reverently and with joy and with gratitude, it's how much those things practice, nurture my relationship with God and make me rely less on myself and more on God and my relationship with God and therefore my faith as I live and act in the world. And those disciplines help me to listen and look for God and Recently, one of them I've been focusing on, I've been learning more about um, and engaging in something called Centering Prayer that retired Bishop Herman Yost has offered to our congregation. And so each week we learn about uh, and practice a practice which allows us to kind of empty ourselves in order to be available to listen for God. And uh, so it's been a daily practice for the last couple of weeks where I try to just work this out and, and it's helpful, very helpful. So when we gather for worship or read scripture or pray, we seek to be a people who listen for God. And everything we do then is a response to what we hear, no matter what we end up doing or being in our lives, that our lives continue to be a vocation where our faith is lived out. Uh, so it doesn't matter what we do with our lives. God still uses us. And maybe because of that, God uses us in a special way. It's in our baptism that we are set apart that we're made holy, we're empowered with the Spirit, and like branches to a vine, Jesus says, we grow and we are nurtured in that Spirit. And the fruits of the Spirit that we hear about in Galatians 5, 
begin to grow in us. And so the voice of God, celebrated today in Psalm 29, is the same one which created Genesis, uh, the, the world and heavens and uh, you and me in Genesis, because we are now God's creation. And then through Christ, God reconciles our lives, brings us back together so that we can hear and we can listen and we can follow and we can be that light. One of the hymns that jumped out at me was I heard the voice of Jesus say, and the third stanza goes like this. I heard the voice of Jesus say, I am this dark world's light. Look unto me, your morn shall rise and all your day be bright. I looked to Jesus and I found in him my star, my sun. And in that light of life I'll walk till traveling days are done. So may you hear the voice of God in your daily walk with, with God and know that God is with you. Grace and peace.